March 2006, and after having won the WBU Cruiserweight title three years earlier, Swansea's Enzo Maccarinelli had notched up six successful defences, five of them inside the distance. Mark Hobson had three impressive British title defences under his belt, two of which ended early, so he was on a high despite the enormity of the task that lay ahead. Here's Mark Hobson. He only learned that he was going to get this chance to fight Enzo Macronelli some three weeks ago when Johnny Nelson dropped out, and what an opportunity he has. British and Commonwealth champion. He's not had a fight since December 2004, but now here against the big-hitting Enzo Macronelli. Hobson himself, a big man, stands six foot five and a puncher. British and Commonwealth belts being carried behind him as he makes his way forward to ringside. Hobson with his trainer Chris Aston enjoying, I think, the moment very, very much indeed. His 29th professional fight here tonight. Been a professional since 1997, and arguably the biggest fight of his career. He said himself, "You only get this chance once or twice, and you've got to take it." We will see. And now making his way to the ring, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the defending champion, Enzo. Good reception for Macronelli. And there he is, the big man from Swansea. He thought that he was going to have the chance of fighting Johnny Nelson for the WBO title. Nelson suffered a bad knee injury. That's not happened. And so he has to focus on an altogether different challenge. And it might be one which is better suited to Macronelli. He likes to throw punches, likes to have a man coming forward towards him. And that's what Hobson is. And here's Macronelli in his 24th professional fight. And he will be looking forward to having the chance to have a genuine contest. Only three fights in the last 18 months. And not, in all fairness, particularly testing engagements. Now he has a man who is well capable of beating him. And he knows that he's got to be right at his best. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you. And we welcome you to the MEN Arena here in Manchester, England, as we have a big night of action coming your way live on ITV1 and brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network and Gary Shaw Productions as sponsored by News of the World, Big On Boxing, and Nemiroff, and on the internet on www.frankwarren.tv. This title bout, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned by the WBU Supervisor Bobby Rogers, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the student in charge, Charles Giles. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, Larry O'Connell, Reg Thompson and Mickey Van. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Dave Paris. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU Cruiserweight Championship. Introducing to you first, on my left, the challenger, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Huddersfield, England. His weight, 14 stone, four pounds. His record stands at 24 wins, three losses, and one draw, with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight challenging for the WWE title, please welcome the British and Commonwealth Cruiserweight Champion, introducing Mark Hobson. Across the ring, the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a black trunks and hailing from Swansea, Wales. He weighed in at an even 14 stone. His fine record stands at 22 wins, only one defeat with 17 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the seventh defense of his title. It 
introducing the WBU Cruiserweight Champion. Please welcome Enzo Macarelli. Once again, our referee in charge, Dave Paris. So final words of advice from Dave Paris, the very experienced referee tonight, and this is a fight between two genuine big punchers. Question marks about the punch resistance of both of them in some quarters, they won't have it of course, but I tell you what, this could be a thriller. And who lands first could be the key, Duke. It certainly could. Um, you know, McInerney's a big puncher, as we're well aware. You know, Hobson is no slouch himself. You know, stands six foot five and he's a very well schooled boxer. By way of identification, let me remind you Mark Hobson with the shaven head. And trying to straight away get Macronelli onto the back foot where he's not at his most effective. Macronelli, who won the title by knocking out Bruce Scott in June 2003, and tonight, as Jimmy Lennon was saying in his seventh pro fight, a uh, seventh defense of that title, and the left hook is the big danger shot from Macronelli. Hobson hasn't fought for over a year. Lost to a fight, David Hay. Hay pulled out injured, and then a nasty attack of shingles for Hobson. So that fight never happened, and he was very much treading water in his career. Had to go back to the part-time job as a, being a bailiff during the day to make ends meet, feed his young family, but here he has the chance, and he is a solid puncher, and he started well, working well behind that jab. He certainly has, and this is exactly what I would expect from Hobson, who is a very well-schooled athlete. You know, he's athletically built for a big guy. He does have very, very good skills, and this, for me, represents a far harder challenge for, for McInerney than Johnny Nelson, who has completely different tactics. Good right hand from Macronelli, solid shot over the top, but Hobson takes it well and comes back, returns one of his own. It's good to see the good spirit between these two fighters, both at the press conference on Thursday and at the weigh-in yesterday. No phony grimacing or threats between these two, just healthy, old-fashioned respect. And it's a fast pace. But for two big guys, it is a good pace, it's a hard pace. That's McElhinney's trademark left hook to the body that he's had a lot of success with in previous fights. McElhinney weighed in four pounds inside the limit. Says though to, he told me, he says he feels perfectly strong though, walking around at 14 stones. He's not, oh, that's a good shot from Hobson, good right hand. And that made, uh, that made McElhinney, made him blink. It's been a good opening round, this, for Hobson. Oh, good right hand, and Macronelli's in trouble. Right hand and a left hook. Two good shots from Hobson, and Macronelli wants to hold on. This is exactly what I feared for, for Macronelli. Hobson's a very, very good punch picker, and he's very, very dogged in his approach and his attack. He's pinpoint accurate. Got him again. nailed him again. Macronelli landed a right hand of his own, and it was the right hand counter from Hobson. And Macronelli, for him, the bell does not come a moment too soon. Yeah, I'm all right, we caught the top, yeah, Breathe yeah. Deep. Suck that wind up, so. Come on, breathe in. Work off the jab, no, be first. Yeah, right. This kid's gonna go. You know that and I know that from here. Stay alone, stay your time. Just don't take any silly shots. Everything's straight. Straight jabs, and then just wait till you back him up. He's going back all round, Mark. You just have to wait for them right hands. You're rushing him. The only time he caught you is when you rush them. Don't <laughs> rush the right oh, hands. What a good start from the, Mark Hobson, the, the challenger for the WBU title, and he nailed Macronelli with that, and for a moment, the knees of the big Welshman sagged. Well, Macronelli did really well because he got caught with the shot and then he rolled under and took, took it pretty well. But, you know, we've got a good punch picker in Hobson. Give me the boxer against the puncher every day of the week. 
But what the champion needs to do now is to keep his chin down and up his work rate. Good right hand again from Hobson. Macronelli trying to respond with one of his own. His corner between rounds. Charlie Pearson, his trainer, was saying, work your way in behind the jab. Don't just hang your chin out in the air trying to throw bombs. And maybe that's a, a legacy of one or two, two straightforward fights that Macronelli has had. And Hobson's going looking for him. He really is. Well, you see, Hobson's, as I said before, he's very well scored for a big man. You know, you don't see very many cruiserweights using a jab as effectively as he does. He's got good technical skills, and he's very, very patient. Although he's hurt, Macronelli, he's still using the jab as his range finder to set it up for the right hand again. And the important thing is that he's managed to take away Macronelli's strength, which is going forward and winging those hooks. And right from the word go, he's established authority behind a classy-looking left jab. Macronelli in reverse gear and nowhere near as effective as when he's moving forward and loading those trademark hooks. See, he's had it all his own way, uh, Macronelli, thus far right. with his career and his opponents, because obviously he's been able to, to bully them and use his strength and that muscle of them and obviously take these guys out. But at the moment, he's being met punch for punch. And right, you're right, John, he can't fight. He doesn't seem to be nowhere near as effective on the back foot. I wondered, you know, in the run-up to this fight, whether Hobson might be a little bit ring rusty. He'd been training for a six-rounder against uh, Buster Keaton, the Sheffield fighter. That was supposed to be taking place at your call in the not-too-far distance. But he's looked sharp. He's settled into it absolutely from world go. Well, we won't know if he's ring rusty if, until this fight gets into the second half. That's where it really takes effect. But at the moment, Hobson's just doing exactly the right thing. He's keeping the puncher on the back foot, not allowing him to tee off with anything. And he's, he's just outworking Macronelli. I remember early in his career. Oh, good left hand this time from, Hop, from Macronelli. That was a good shot. And that's just stunned Hobson for the first time and took him out of his stride. And Macronelli senses that for the first time, perhaps, he's hurt the big man from Huddersfield. Yeah, that's, that's more like it from, from Macronelli. Landed a good shot, but I don't think he's winning this round. More purpose about Hobson after he suffered a really bruising defeat against Sebastian Rothman, the South African, a few years ago. He rethought his whole attitude to this sport and has come back a much, much better fighter. Certainly Hobson won the first round and a big right hand right in the closing seconds and Macronelli walks right into it and maybe Hobson's won that. Listen, though, let me have to tell you again about loading up that right hand, right? Keep everything fucking strict. Well, some furious Go words on. of advice in the Hobson corner from Chris Aston, saying, I don't want to tell you again. Stop he wants him to just work in behind the jab, keep his close defence, and don't give Macronelli the chance to land that big left hand, which was so effective. He is scared of you. You've hurt him. Going on every one of them. No, I lost it to Ronzo. Yeah. No, no, Macronelli no. maybe just jab, settling back jab, into step it. Step with it, snap it out. Come on, get that jab going. Don't let him be the boss. Come on, all right? Snap, snap, stick it out, okay? And step in with a jab. Bang, bang, quickly. Don't load up with every punch, okay? Come on. <laughs> Macronelli landed a good left hand of his own, but in the closing seconds just walked into a peach of a right hand. Well, I've got the champion two rounds down now. You know, Hobson's made an absolute dynamite start to this fight. Beginning of the third round, and between rounds, a couple of hefty slaps on the face for Mark Hobson from his trainer, Chris Aston. They've clearly worked out a game plan of how they're going to beat Macronelli, take away his jab, get him onto the back foot. Well, you know, Hobson's he's British and Commonwealth champion, so they should have known by taking this fight they had a world school champion in front of them. You know, full credit to Macinelli, obviously wants to prove himself the best, you know, in, in the world, but um, this is a, a very dangerous opponent. Macinelli, much more circumspect than in the early stages. So you can see the confidence starting. Oh, oh he dropped! Great right hand! Dropping right hand! And Hobson has taken it well. I think it landed on the 10 
brutal as much as anything, and he's shrugging his shoulders as much as today. Well, I'm not hurt. It's a flash knockdown, but knockdown it certainly was. And this fight, as we suggested, you just can't take your eyes off it for a moment. Sways this way and that, and now Macronelli senses that he has his man going. Yeah, but Hobson's cool. He's very, very cool. He hasn't recovered yet. His legs are still all over the place. Needs to grab hold, needs to claim, needs Mac to hold on. Macronelli can take him out here. His fans all around the auditorium are urging him forward. And Hobson's legs still are unsteady as Macronelli comes wading forward. He's trying to end this fight right here, right now. That's better from, from Macronelli. He went looking to plant these shots. He was just starting to let this fight slip away, but he's answered it with the big right hand. What he do, oh, great shot again, two terrific uppercuts, and Hobson does well to take those. Left hand and then the right hand, firing in, rocking back his head. Hobson's still not quite, he heads, his head still hasn't cleared properly, but he did the right thing in trying to hold on, his legs still aren't quite right, but he's got enough faculties around him to keep a nice high guard. That is a good body shot from Macronelli, hammering it in. Hobson is trying to hold on here, and it's 30 seconds to go, but it's going to seem like an awful long time. A fierce uppercut just whistled past the front of his face. Hobson really needs to hear the end of this round. He really does, just to try and get some respite. It's a savage attack by Macronelli. I'm just wondering if Macronelli might have punched himself out a little bit, though. Well, possibly so. There's a bit of blood around the face of Mark Hobson, but he's coming back trying to throw big shots in the closing seconds of the third. What a dramatic round. Big round for Macronelli, and this has put the fight right back on level terms. You don't stop being paid, OK? You know what? Well, what a terrific fight this is starting out to be. You see that damage around the left eye. Well, that's a, a legacy of fights earlier in Hobson's career. He does have a slight tendency to cut, but Macronelli caught him with a clubbing right hand. It certainly did catch him with a beautiful shot. But Hobson, full credit to him because he's still standing. Macronelli just punched himself out ever just slightly because he put everything into obviously finishing off the fight. All right. Now, don't just walk in reckless, snap that jab out, lift it up, mix it up and down, OK? Positive, now be the boss in there, come on. Yeah, he was. Another round like that. Ten Ten seconds. Seconds. Ten seconds. Be the boss in there, the, the words from Dean Powell, and there's the knockdown, the right hand from Macarelli came thundering into the side of the head of Mark Hobson. That'll be a 10-8 round, and that will make it dead level. Good start from Hobson, solid right hand, the first scoring shot. Hobson, let me remind you, with the shaven head, slightly the taller man at six foot five from Huddersfield in Yorkshire. Well, Hobson's head has obviously cleared reasonably well because he's come out and he's just he's thumped that right hand straight into the side of Macronelli's head. But as, as Macronelli goes back, he leaves his chin out to dry. He leaves it hanging right up in the air. He's absolutely wide open. Hobson's beating him to the jab. There's no doubting that Macronelli's got power. Macronelli complaining that was low. I don't think it was low, actually, but the referee saying, yeah, keep the punches up, Dave Paris. Enzo, Enzo, the chant goes up from the Welsh supporters. Vincenzo Cantatori, the Italian who fought Johnny Nelson. Uh, last autumn, he's an interested observer at ringside. Could be that the winner of this might be fighting him for the WBO title if Nelson decides not to fight on. That still remains an imponderable. Nelson currently suffering with a very, very serious knee injury. See, it's Hobson now is actually going looking for Macronelli, who doesn't seem to be doing as much at this point in the fight. It's just content just to go back. Maybe he's looking trying to sucker. Uh, Hobson on. May have been a good spot of yours, Duke, that he produced such a furious onslaught in the last round. And there might be an element that he's just drained himself. And he might be taking a bit of a breather in this fourth. Well, Hobson's got through with one or two nice looking body shots also, which has had an effect on Macronelli. 
He well, Hobson, Hobson's come back well. Yeah, Mac, I think he's been down in the last round. Mac Connelly very deliberately going back. You know, I think he's, he's sucking up air. He's obviously trying to, you know, recover from the round previous to this because he's done nothing in this round. Right hand over the top. As he goes back, though, Macronelli doesn't do a great deal, does he? He goes into reverse gear and doesn't throw the jab. Well, you know, it doesn't appear that he can fight on the back foot, John. Just, just content to cover up as he circles the ring. Well, this is Hobson's round. Yeah, he's bossing this one. Unless Macronelli finds something special now. His corner was saying, be the boss, be the man to throw the punches first, establish your jab, bring him up inside, and he's not been able to do any of that. Well, you know, I've, I've seen Hobson fight before where he's looked a little bit shaky early on, but then once he gathers himself and comes back into it, he's a hard guy to beat when he gets on top. Close round, but I think Hobson might just have edged it. Good comeback by Hobson, bearing in mind he'd been down in the third. Let's hear what's going on in that corner. Again. Right? Just word the jab, back him under these ropes, then let him have a right hand. You hurt him with the left up to the body, you didn't see it, but you hurt him. They are confident in there. They really think if they can stick to the plan, they're going to win this fight. Well, you know, you, you can't blame them, really. Obviously, they've worked out a game plan, and they can see just how effective Hobson is when he uses the jab. One jab, double jab, and then whip the right crossover, OK? But boss the fight from the centre of the ring and step in with your jab. Don't flick it, OK? Enzo Macronelli, the defending champion of the WBU Cruiserweight title, is having all the trouble he needs from Yorkshire's Mark Hobson. Hobson, slightly the taller man, with his back to you now. Shaven headed. It's a lovely uppercut there by Macronelli. You know, he's finding it hard to penetrate the guard from Hobson because he's got his hands up high. Between rounds, Hobson's corner was imploring him just to work the jab. And they also told him that he'd hurt Macronelli with a couple of the left hands to the body. And you can see he's going body hunting now against Macronelli as Macronelli tries to lift those uppercuts inside. It's a dangerous shot, that one, when he lands it. Well, he puts so much effort into the uppercuts, you know, it takes more out of him than it does actually out of, out of Hobson. But this is better boxing now from Macronelli. This is where he likes it on the front foot, pushing Hobson back. In the fifth round now, Enzo Macronelli, amazing statistic, he's only been past four rounds twice in his career. Pro since 1999, with just the one defeat early in his career against Lincoln's Lee Swaby. And he started this fifth round very much better than he ended the fourth. There's Macronelli. 23 fights, 17 knockout victories in those 22 wins. Yeah, that, was, that was better work from, uh, from Hobson. You know, trying the combination, but, you know, Macronelli, to his credit, just he rolled in and he rolled out and made him miss. Hobson with 12 knockouts of his own can be a very heavy-handed fighter. Now, it's not too often that I'm sure that uh, Macronelli's got somebody that's been as tall or taller than him, and he's made it just as difficult for him to, to land his, his trademark punches on. Macronelli landed a, a left hook and a good solid right hand there, and Hobson did not flinch. Well, it's a more even round this round, it's a better round for the champion. Yeah, you get, the, you get the feeling this is a, a key phase of the fight here. If Macronelli does start to establish himself at this moment, and then you'd wonder where the Hobson would perhaps have the sharpness in the second half of the fight. Remember, he's not been in a ring since December 2004. A lot, a lot depends on if Macronelli can up his work rate and really push Hobson. The two of them are really loading up with these shots. There's no pussyfooting around in there. They're really looking to tee off. It's a quality fight. Closing stages of the fifth. Macronelli started it well. Hobson's come back better in the second half of the fight. Close one. Come on. 
Well, Dukes scoring that one narrowly to Enzo Macronelli there. So the fight is really, really delicately poised. He maybe got it about level, Duke. Yeah, I certainly have. An interesting both corners, insistent that the men get back to boxing basics, work behind the jab. They ain't like what you've been through, okay? You keep your focus, you keep your focus, you keep your jab out. I'm telling you, this kid's going to start falling to bits in a couple of rounds, okay? Keep your focus. Keep your stuff together, keep your jab out, and when you get inside, try and get round out left hand side. Rousing words from Chris Aston in Mark Hobson's corner. He's been saying to him, stick to the jab, keep boxing, and this man will start to fall apart. Enzo Macronelli, though, won the last round. The Welshman. The black shorts and the narrow white flash. Well, Hobson obviously knows just how long he's been out of the ring. He looks like the guy to me that's actually pacing himself. He has to be absolutely pinpoint accurate with his assault, with his punches. He can't waste a single shot because he knows the longer the fight goes, the more telling it will be on him physically. Good combination from Hobson. Working head and body, lovely. Hobson's got some good performances on his record, won the British title by beating Rob Norton. Norton, who's a wily sort of customer, he outpointed Norton and had to get off the floor to do so. So he's a, he's a gutsy man, he'll stay there. Won his last ten fights as Hobson. Hobson's right eye now is, is quite badly bruised. Well, he's been taking them straight rights from McAnelly. It's under, under the right eye, I think, Duke, but it yeah. is starting to just close a little. Well, the corner will need to get the inswell on that as the minute he gets back to the corner and keep that swelling down. Maybe just a little nick there as well. Macronelli's starting to come forward, which is where he's so much more effective. He's beginning to boss this fight. Good straight left, followed by the right over the top. Yeah, nice reply from, from Hobson, but McInerney comes straight back at him with the same combination. Hobson's just trying a really good sneak right hand. He's tried the same shot twice and just missed the target. He's just pulling back, he's waiting for, he's waiting for McInerney to, to lead off with the jab, and he leans back and he snaps back on the right hand. Well, he thought uh, Rob Norton, Norton shook Hobson rather than put him down. But it was nevertheless a, a good win for Hobson. Well balanced fight this one. Hobson, who started so well in the first two rounds, if you're just joining us, Macronelli came back with the third round knockout, and since then it's Pickham stuff. A nice little one two there from Hobson. But at this present moment in time, it's Macronelli looks the fresher of the two. It's Hobson who wants to hold now. Just starting to feel the pace, I think, Hobson. Yeah, a few people thought this round might be over in the first round. That's a great body shot from Macronelli. And another one, terrific uppercut following on. And again, Hobson starts to look a bit weary in there. And well, he might. That was a quality body assault. Well, Hobson is looking a bit tired as he sinks down onto his stool in that corner. He's walking in now like this, Mark, yeah? Relax, relax. Good deep breath. Good to tell See some of the action from that last round, which, by and large, Macronelli had the best of. Good body shot, and there's that uppercut. Yeah, Macronelli's really working well to the body. So his trademark left hook to the body. And watch this uppercut. Lovely shot. That was the key moment of the round. Okay, good boy. Now, come on. That's more like it. Let's start that round there. You finish that. They're back. starting to like the way it's going in the Macronelli corner. And in the meantime, okay. they're having to work away on that right eye, as Duke was telling you they'd have to, with that piece of flat metal. Oh, yeah, that's called an in-swell gel. Uh, John, gel. I've got the wrong fight area. I think I'm in America. Gel boy. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's a definite spring in Macronelli's step now. Right. Seventh of 12 rounds for this WBU Cruiserweight title fight, a fight made at the 200 pound 14 stone four limit. Right. It's Macronelli out jabbing Hobson now. Macronelli, the dark haired Welshman. 25 years old from Swansea. He's having to dig deep. It's a grueling contest, but it's starting to just go his way. Hobson really cannot afford to let Macronelli push him back and start to dictate the fight, the pace of the fight. But you just feel at this point. The inactivity is seriously damaging Hobson's performance this far. Good body shot from Hobson, right hand, just as we thought that the, some of the snap was starting to go out of his work. Started so impressively behind his jab, but Macronelli's able to bully him back, and he's turning this one increasingly into a brawl, and a brawl fought on his terms. Good right hand, left hand, right hand combination from Macronelli. Hobson just dropped off the pace now. Needs to try and pick this one back up. Needs to take the center of the ring, which is where he had so much success in the beginning, and push Macronelli back. Oh, right hand from Hobson, and Macronelli walked into that one. Right. The Welshman occasionally just allows that left hand to drop, and that's where he's so vulnerable. And in that instance, Hobson could have put him down. Macronelli digs in, though, and plants that left hand into the body once more. But that'll have given Hobson, uh, Hobson heart. Right hand again from Hobson. This is really warming up here. God, he took the words right out of my mouth, John. This is really warming up really nicely. You know, it's punch for punch. Both boxers just a little bit tired because they're putting so much effort into every punch they throw. I just thought that the resolve was starting to ebb away from Mark Hobson when that right hand has brought him right back into this round and he's trying to finish this round as the aggressor. Well, it's Macrilenny now who starts to look a little sorry for himself. Trying to load up with the uppercut once more, Macronelli. This time, Hobson was cute to it and lands another good right hand. Come on. What a good round of boxing that was. Might not have been the most slippery and elusive sort of style from the two men, but there were some real heavy punches coming in from both sides. Now swallow this and take your time. Take a look again at the seventh round action. Right hand from Macronelli, but back came Hobson. There he goes, chopping right hand. There's the right hand that just stunned Macronelli. A few elbows going in there as well, forearms. It's tough. It certainly is. You know, it's a very physical fight. Not only is there, you know, certain infringements yeah, going on, but obviously but they're taking it. shots as well, okay, where the pace yeah, is just starting to drop off. You know, this could become a free-for-all. You, you just feel that the, the next on. one to land a really big punch, you know, you're going to get a real sort of old gun fashion uh, fight going on where they're standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, they've had some dramatic fights on ITV recently, that Danny Williams, Matt Skelton fight last week, and we've got another one here. Macronelli and Hobson. Macronelli, remember, defending his WBU cruiserweight title. The Welshman with his back to us with the dark hair. Might just be ed edging it on the cards, but not by a great deal. Had his man down in the third round, but he needed that after Hobson had started really well. Good solid right hand from Hobson. Yes, yeah, better boxing from Hobson. The, the bruising on the right eye is getting a little bit worse now. Don't think it's affecting his vision, though. Not as yet. Swelling a bit, Duke, but I think he can still see through there. Yeah, it's a hard fight, though, John. It really is. And I wouldn't like to take one of these bombs from uh, Macronelli. No, mercifully, I don't think you're going to have to. Oh, thank God. Thank God I'm not a cruiserweight and my fighting days are long gone. Who 
who's going to find the initiative at this stage in the eighth round. Macronelli right in Hobson's face and landing two solid body shots as he comes out of that clinch. And those have hurt Hobson, they've hurt him. Yeah, they hurt, but you know, they take so much out of you, the body shots, when you have to try so hard to land them. Oh, good right hand over the top. Hobson's taken some really heavy headshots in this fight. Well, we've seen him weather the storm and come back. Can he do it again? Macronelli starting to tee off, and Hobson's getting more static, more easy to hit. Dave Paris, the referee, splitting the two men. Both boxers now desperately tired. Yeah, and it's, it's more Macronelli who's into uncharted territory as the fight goes into its later stages. I tell you, that jab shook Macronelli right down to his boots. Oh, good right hand from Hobson. Macronelli walks straight onto it. See what Macronelli's doing, he's tearing off with everything that he throws, but he's leaving himself wide open. He tries these big one-twos, and he leaves his chin out to dry. Well, Macronelli's thrown the more shots in this round, and a good straight right hand there, down the tube, right down the middle, but Hobson takes it well, and he's still a danger, he's still a threat, and the British and Commonwealth champion is still giving Enzo Macronelli one very, very hard night. Macronelli himself said before the fight that he thought that it was going to be a better fight than if he'd fought Johnny Nelson, and I have to say, I think that may well be the case. Here's good work, good work from Macronelli. Left jab straight into that damaged right eye of Mark Hobson. And here's some body shots from Macronelli again. Big left hook. Yeah, Macronelli puts everything into every punch. But Hobson still dangerous, and he caught Macronelli with a solid right hand of his own. Macronelli just walked right into it. There you are. Well, both eyes getting marked up, there's that left eye which has uh, been damaged before the fight began from earlier contests. There you are, you heard it from the corner, four rounds that he's never done and you have. In other words, Mark Hobson knows what it's like to be in these last few rounds of a major fight. Macronelli in somewhat uncharted territory. Oh, good body shot from Hobson. He's come straight back at Macronelli. You know, when Macronelli tees off, as I said before, he, he leaves his chin out to dry. It's just hanging out there, just waiting to get hit. I get the impression that Macronelli still might just be edging it, but that Hobson has got a great chance if he lands more right hands like that one. And another one. Two solid rights from Hobson, and suddenly it's Macronelli who looks a little bit unsteady. This fight really keeps you on the edge of your seat. You know, one fighter takes takes the initiative and then it just goes straight back into the other one. Psychologically, this is where uh, Macronelli will start to question himself in a hard fight, which is what this is. You know, he's going into un, 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 uh, unterritory ground where he's not really sure just how well he'll be able to cope Oh, right hand from right hand from Hobson. Macronelli walked straight into it and he's leaning on and holding on, buying a few seconds for his head to clear. And he looks just a little bit unsteady, Macronelli. Hobson will sense it. And now he's going looking for Macronelli. Macronelli fighting on instinct to left hand. Johnny's absolutely out on his feet. He doesn't know where he is. Hobson's going, got him! Doesn't know where he is. Beautiful left hook from Hobson. Macronelli's gone, look at his eyes. Macronelli's having to really suck it up in there now. He's having to hold on, having to buy time to allow his head to close. This is a big round for Mark Hobson. Well, this is what worries me about all punches. They can punch, but when they get taken down the stretch into the later rounds, they are nine times out of ten found wanting, and that's what we're seeing from Macronelli. But he might have the cushion of round advantages. Here's Macronelli coming bravely, fighting back.
He's got fighting heart, there's no question about that. We knew Mark Hobson had been there before, but Macronelli as well. You could get four to one on Hobson to win this fight beforehand, and Macronelli's making a nonsense of that. Uh, sorry, Hob Hobson rather is making a nonsense of that. Well, Hobson, as we said before, he's been the distance, you know, a fair few times in his career. He's a seasoned pro and experienced pro. Oh, got him again! Yeah, but he's taken it, Duke. He's taken it and he's still up there. They've said that Enzo Macronelli question marks against his chin. He was put down, remember, by Bruce Scott before he took this title. But Hobson has come right back into this fight with a big, big round. It's a fantastic round for Hobson. Needed it not only for, uh, for uh, to win the round, but also for his confidence. Well, I certainly had Macronelli ahead before that round, but Hobson has narrowed it, and narrowed it markedly. Here's the big right hand. Macronelli took that one, but there was more coming where that came from. Yeah, it was the left hook also onto the temple that really done most of the damage for Hobson in that round. Fantastic round for him, needed it. Oh, big left hand there, that was that shook Macronelli, and he wanted to hold on there. It was just a question of survival for a few seconds thereafter. Caught by that left hook. You've got, to, you've got to hold in the middle of that ring and you've got to boss the fight from there, OK? Come on, try, let's yeah, try. Come on, They're come saying on. boss the fight from the middle of the ring, but Macronelli still needs to look a little bit banged up himself Double around that left now, eye. Here's the Hobson corner. Double this speed now, twice as speed. Into the 10th round of this WBU Cruiserweight title fight. Enzo Macronelli, the Welshman, the champion, has had a tough, tough right. ninth. Well, this fight is absolutely on a knife edge. We had a split decision with the title fight, the British heavyweight title fight, or the Commonwealth heavyweight title fight last week. Could it be that it's heading into similar grounds this time? Hobson just needs to get back to his boxing. Macronelli still trying to load up with those body shots, the hooks and the uppercuts. Oh, great punching from both men. Well, you know, Macronelli's showing a true fighting heart, true champion's heart. You know, he's been hit, he's been hurt, but he wants this, you know, hang on to his championship, so he's putting it all on the line. Full credit to him. The Welsh fans are subdued as well, they might be, but there were gasps from ringside as the two men landed almost simultaneously in that last exchange. Hobson really takes a good shot, he really does the head or the body, because Macronelli's absolutely winding these shots up. But he takes so much out of himself in doing so. He puts everything into every punch. And when he finishes his, his onslaught, watch his legs. They're just all over the place. Those are two tired men leaning on. Good shot from Hobson. Good body shot. Lovely body shot, John. Took the words right out of my mouth yet again. Right into the midsection there of, of Macronelli. And that hurt. Macronelli coming forward again for another flashy combination, those hooks and uppercuts coming in. It might well be that this fight is all down to these last three rounds. Uppercut from Macronelli this time. Another good shot, and somehow Hobson soaks it up and manages to stay upright. Yeah, that right eye is nearly shut now for uh, Hobson. It's a better round now for Macanelli. Just got his nose in front of the minute in the dying seconds of this round. Both boxers now desperately tired. Oh, good right hand again from Hobson, but Macanelli takes it. Last few seconds of another grueling round, and what a hard, hard fight this is. Can't be a lot between it on the judges' cards. I've got it more or less level. I'd really find it very difficult to split them. 
Macronelli had his moments, he had Hobson down, but Hobson, is he just the stronger as we go down into the stretch? Let's get the thoughts of Barry McGuigan now. What do you reckon, Barry? It's all big round. It's a bull in this game now. Don't feel sorry for yourself out here. Don't start feeling sorry for yourself. Keep working. I don't care if you're inside or outside, you keep working now. Yes. You want big rounds for winners, right? Yeah. Two rounds, two big rounds. Two big Come rounds. Go swinging over the top because you're not going to hit him. Jab and pop one, two, and then lift one up through the middle, okay? Because he's leaning, all right? Now, come on, listen, you've got, if you can't, you just keep, faint the jab, faint the jab and throw the right hand, okay? But you've got to hold the centre of the ring. Don't let him push really you back, Really could right? be down to these on, last on, two rounds. Come on, and come these on, fighters man. must Shout know it. Their corners are instilling in them inside. the Work desire to just go out there and risk it all in the last six minutes. The 11th round. The fight might well be on a knife edge. Macronelli, the champion, against Hobson, the British and Commonwealth champion, the Yorkshireman against the Welshman, and what a terrific fight it has turned out to be. Hobson trying to be the aggressor. Macronelli ducked low as he tried to come inside and hold on and he walked into another right hand from Hobson. Well, you just wonder if Johnny Nelson is watching this, he'll be quite glad that Macronelli's having a hard, grueling fight. In a fight like this, will he do take a lot out of you? Yep, it's fights like this which might make Johnny Nelson think a bit about his future career, possibly as a broadcaster, which he's been doing in another place. Good and straight left this time from Macronelli. Yeah, both boxers really tired. Nice attack from Macronelli, jab and then the hook to the body. Yeah, good work from Macronelli. It's got to be a time between these next two rounds for heroic speeches from both corners. They're going to have to inspire their men. And nothing too damaging so far in the 11th until now. Another right hand from Hobson. Well, watch Macronelli as he goes back, John. As he goes back, he just he hangs his chin out. He's almost inviting Hobson to throw the shots so he can get nailed. Well, Hobson needs no second bidding, not at this stage. Getting a few words of uh, warning from Dave Paris, the referee. Done a good job in there tonight, says Dave. Such a hard, ruling fight. Good uppercut again from Macronelli, but Hobson's chin has been tested again and again, and he has passed that test. But has he done enough? to take a title off a champion. Good right hand from Hobson, and he's finishing the 11th round strongly. Used to be the old maxim that to take a champion's title, you have to win big. Well, he's really, you know, he's fought his heart out. He's almost worn it on his sleeve in this one. He's just showing the champion how badly he wants it. It's up to the champion now to answer him. Mark Hobson, who has the names of his two young children tattooed on the inside of his arm. Liam and Leia. Macronelli trying to get up onto his toes. I find it very difficult to split them in this round, Duke. Very close round, that one. God, I would just give it to Hobson. Well, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, Macronelli had his body shots, which were effective, a couple of good uppercuts. Maybe Hobson did enough. But they're saying he's got to have a big round. Let's have a listen. OK, you're looking for breathers and you know it. You should be punching all the time. Deep breath. Deep breath, Come on, Matt, everything now. OK, it all runs out here. Now, he, listen to me. Listen to me. He's going to start quick here, OK? It's the last round coming A few good out. Yorkshire voices in that corner. He starts quick, you're Chris Aston, the trainer. As as punching, in the other corner, back. Enzo Macronelli, hearing from Charlie Pearson and from Dean yes. Powell. Do you want to drop more water? You've got to win this one, though. Come on. Come on, you'll win it. You want a big round? Yeah. Big round now, come on. What a good fight this has been.
see the two of them touch gloves and hug and have a word of congratulations between what might be the most fearsome three minutes of either man's career. Well, this fight said everything, John. It really has. You know, we've had the knockdowns. You know, we've got the bruising. We've got the closeness. We've got the gruelingness. And the determination and sheer pride of both men. This last round could be the key. Well, this is where Hobson has been time and time again in the 12th round. McAnally hasn't been in the 12th round of a major championship fight. So it's a new experience for him. He's got to really dig in now. He's got to think about all the mornings he's got up and done his morning. Oh, good shot from Hobson. Good left hand. Macronelli, his head rocked back. Fantastic shot from Hobson. As I said before, you know, the morning runs, the diet's in, the going to bed early, the not going out, the not the socialising, being away from home, all of those things are taken into account, and this is where it comes into play. Frank Warren, Macronelli's manager and promoter, looking a little bit concerned on the far side, bellowing advice to Macronelli to bring his punches up, throw the uppercuts inside. But Hobson has had the edge in the first half of this 12th and possibly decisive round, you never know. Champion needs a really big finish. On my book, oh, anyway. Another good right hand from Hobson. And another, but McAnally still upright, he's holding on, but there was another big right hand went in. He's hurt, John, make no mistake about that. It's a good finish this far for Hobson. I've got him one round up in this final round. Bravery from Macronelli, but he needs a big last minute. The two of them are dog tired and a great right hand from Macronelli. Hobson takes it, this time it's the Yorkshireman who holds on. One big shot could still do it either way. There's McAnally. Big right hand over the top. Yeah, he knows he needs and a the big body shot. And the terrific uppercut. And McAnally is producing the grandstand finish, showing a champion's resolve. But will it be enough? Nine seconds now of a really entertaining, grueling fight. And people are cheering around this auditorium as well they might. They've been royally entertained for the start of the big fights here tonight. And this is going to go all the way to the judges' scorecard. Macronelli has had a good last minute of this 12th round. It might have caught the judges' eyes. And there are the two hug. And if this was a draw, I don't think anybody could complain. That has been a terrific fight. And people are standing up and applauding. I saw the head of Showtime Television, Ken Hirschman, on the far side of the ring there holding his arms up and cheering the two men. He enjoyed it, and so too did so many here tonight. What an excellent fight that was, Duke. Great fight. Fantastic fight, it really was. You know, Hobson, uh, for me, John, I think has just nicked it. I really do. He, he, you know, he'd he done so well. He really dug in there against a real big puncher. I wouldn't be so sure that Macronelli might, you know, that if it comes down to that last round, Macronelli had such a good last minute, and here he was coming, digging in, landing that chopping right hand, body shots up towards the final bell, and maybe Macronelli's edged that final round, I don't know, but difficult to say, the two link arms and salute the crowd, and, you know, I, I almost think that the two men in there would quite like to see that one as a draw, and they'll talk about this in years to come, because that was exceptional. Very good fight, very good fight indeed to start off the big fights this evening. And they're taking the pose there for the photographers, for pictures that will be in the papers. Very, very difficult to separate them. And they're just checking, checking all the cards. There's Frank Warren, I wonder if he knows what's happened in there. He looks a little bit nervous and pensive, doesn't he? Macronelli there, the champion, or the champion at this moment, and the British and Commonwealth champion is Mark Hobson, about to become the WBU champion. Are we going to have another split decision? We may well do. And good applause for Hobson, and not only from the, his own fans, but also from the big contingent of Welshmen. I think 
Well, has Macronelli just done enough to hang on? Tough, tough fight. Referee's going to draw the two men together, and Jimmy Lennon Jr. has got his microphone in his hand, and in just a moment or two, we will have the results. These are tense moments. Who's got it? Who has got it? Let's find out. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before we read our score totals, we've all seen an outstanding 12 rounds of boxing. No matter who the winner is, they both deserve a round of applause. Mark Hobson and Enzo Macaronelli. Well, fans, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Larry O'Connell, scores about 116 to 112. Judges Reg Thompson and Mickey Van both score the bat 114 to 113. All three in favor of the winner. And still champion. Oh, Macarelli's got it. Macarelli. Macarelli gets it. I thought 116, 112 was a little bit wide. 114, 113. Pretty much how we saw it at ringside. Duke McKenzie, Baron McGuigan and myself all had it pretty much on a knife edge going towards that final round and I wonder, it'll be interesting to see the cards perhaps, perhaps that last round has won it for Macronelli and that grandstand finish he got but what price a rematch for Mark Hobson maybe he deserves that one that was a terrific effort I think he definitely deserves a rematch at least it was a fantastic fight I had him winning, but I'm not a judge. You know, sometimes you get these right, sometimes you get them wrong. But uh, fantastic effort from from uh, from Hobson. Well done to the champion. I thought that the two lads came out of there with enormous credit, the prayer of them. Maybe, you never know, a WBO title shot ahead. Who knows, perhaps a rematch. And everybody who's witnessed this one certainly wouldn't argue against that. Macarinelli had been pushed hard by the game Hobson, but the Welshman's big fight experience paid off. Macronelli would win the WBO World Championship in his very next fight before losing a cruiserweight unification bout against David Hay in March 2008.